sure you don't want me to come with you, Harry? Mum, I'm going to be on my own at Hogwarts for months and months. If I can't manage a train platform alone, better to find out sooner rather than later so we can abort. Oh, Harry, I do love you. Always remember that. It's like she's afraid she'll never see me again. He didn't know why Mum was so afraid. So he made a guess. Mum, you know that I'm not going to turn into your sister just because I'm learning magic, right? I promise I'll never let magic come between us. A tight hug cut off his words. There were no questions about his father accompanying him to the magical side of King's Cross Station. Magic ran in families, and Michael Varys Evans couldn't even walk. Good luck at school, Harry. Do you think I bought you enough books? Harry had explained to his father about how he thought this might be his big chance to do something really revolutionary and important. And Professor Varys Evans had nodded and dumped his extremely busy schedule for two solid days in order to go on the greatest used bookstore raid ever. It was very clear what answer Dad was looking for. You can never have enough books, he recited the Varys family motto. But you certainly tried. It was a really, really, really good try. So, do you see a platform nine and three quarters? I'll figure it out. It's probably some sort of test thingy. Maybe look for a trail of mixed footprints on the ground, leading somewhere that doesn't seem to make sense. Dad? Stop that! I haven't even tried to figure it out on my own. I... er... oh, look, there's some people with an owl. I'll go ask them how to get in. And Harry ran away from his parents toward the family of fiery redheads. Hello, dear. First time at Hogwarts. Ron's new, too. And then she froze. She peered closely at him. Harry Potter? Four boys and a red-headed girl also froze in place. How do you know who he is? Your picture was in the newspapers. Harry? Dad, it's not like that. It's because I defeated Dark Lord You-Know-Who when I was one year old. What? Mum can explain. What? Excuse me, but it would be quite extremely helpful if you could tell me how to get to Platform 9 and 3 quarters right now. Just walk straight at the barrier between Platforms 9 and 10. Don't stop, and don't be scared you'll crash into it. That's very important. Best do it at a bit of a run if you're nervous. And whatever you do, don't think of an elephant. George! Ignore him, Harry dear. There's no reason not to think of an elephant. I'm Fred, Mum, not George. Harry took off at a run toward the barrier. Wait a minute. It wouldn't work unless he believed in it. Now he was worried about whether he sufficiently believed he'd go through the barrier, which meant he actually was worried about crashing into it. Harry shut his eyes and ignored everything he knew about justified belief and just tried to believe really hard that he'd go through the barrier and... The sounds around him changed. Harry opened his eyes and stumbled to a halt, feeling vaguely dirtied by having made a deliberate effort to believe something. He was standing in a bright, open-air platform next to a single huge train, fourteen long cars headed up by a massive scarlet metal steam engine with a smokestack that promised death to air quality. The platform was already lightly crowded, even though Harry was a full hour early, and dozens of children and their parents were swarming around benches, tables, and various hawkers and vendors. A moment later, the youngest-looking red-haired boy came through- Core, are you really Harry Potter? I'm Ron Weasley. For the Chudley Cannons. Who or what are the Chudley Cannons? Who are the Chudley Cannons? Only the most brilliant team in the whole history of Quidditch. Sure, they finished at the bottom of the league last year, but... What's Quidditch? Asking this was also a mistake. So, let me get this straight. Catching the snitch is worth 150 points. That violates every possible rule of game design. Look, the rest of this game sounds like it might make sense, sort of, for a sport I mean, but you're basically saying that catching the snitch overwhelms almost any ordinary point spread. There's no back and forth with the other players, and how much fun is it to watch someone incredibly good at moving their eyes? And then whichever seeker gets lucky swoops in and grabs the snitch and makes everyone else's work moot. If you don't like Quidditch, you don't have to make fun of it. If you can't criticize, you can't optimize. I'm suggesting how to improve the game. And it's very simple. Get rid of the snitch. They won't change the game just because you say so. I am the boy who lived, you know. People will listen to me. A look of absolute horror was spreading over Ron's face. Oh, stop giving me that look. I probably won't actually take the time to destroy this pathetic excuse for national sport. I've got way, way, way more important stuff to worry about. Potter, what is standing next to you? Ron's look of horror was replaced by utter hatred. You! 
You get away. He doesn't need to talk to the likes of you. Ron, um, I'm glad you're so enthusiastic about protecting me, but I don't particularly mind talking to Draco. What? Do you know who this is? Yes, Ron. You may remember that I called him Draco without him needing to introduce himself. Where is the famous Weasley family rat? Buried in the backyard. Aw, how sad. I should mention that the Weasley family is widely agreed to have the best pet story ever. Want to tell it, Weasley? You wouldn't think it was funny if it happened to your family. That's enough. If Ron doesn't want to talk about it, he doesn't have to talk about it, and I'd ask that you not talk about it either. That's right, Harry. You see what kind of person he is? Now tell him to go away. Ron, I'm not telling him to go away. He's welcome to talk to me if he wants. Well, I don't intend to hang around with anyone who hangs around with Draco Malfoy. Then Ron spun around and stormed off down the platform. If you didn't like him, why didn't you just walk away? It's not that I hate this Ron guy. I just... just... don't see any reason for him to exist. Pretty much. I'm terribly sorry about our first meeting. I didn't mean to embarrass you in front of Lucius. I just wish Father could have come in while you were flattering me. The one of the assistants must have sworn her closest friend to absolute secrecy because Father says there's weird rumors going around, like you and I got in a fight or something. My father really loves me. Father once missed a Wizengamot vote for me. I was on a broom and I fell off and broke a lot of ribs. So Father missed this really important vote because he was there by my bed at St. Mungo's. Why are you telling me that? It seems sort of... private. One of my tutors once said that people form close friendships by knowing private things about each other, and the reason most people don't make close friends is because they're too embarrassed to share anything really important about themselves. You've gotten lessons on how to manipulate people? For as far back as I can remember, Father bought me tutors. Your turn? Knowing that Draco's hopeful face had probably been drilled into him by months of practice did not make it any less effective, Harry observed. Actually, it did make it less effective, but unfortunately not ineffective. Draco, just so you know, I recognize exactly what you're doing right now. My own books called it reciprocation, and they talk about how giving someone a straight gift of two sickles was found to be twice as effective as offering them twenty sickles and getting them to do what you want. All right, here's mine. Sometimes I wish my own dad was like yours. Not that I wish my dad was a flawless instrument of death like Lucius. I only mean taking me seriously. My father takes all of his allies seriously. That's why he has a lot of allies. So you really are his one weak point. You want to go get something to drink and find somewhere to sit down? Hey, they passed a vendor, a bald but bearded man offering newspapers and comic books and stacked neon green cans. Excuse me, but what is that stuff exactly? Comed tea. If you drink it, something surprising is bound to happen which makes you spill it on yourself or someone else. But it's charmed to vanish just a few seconds later. What happens if I drink Comed tea while doing my best to keep the conversation completely serious? Who knows? You suddenly see a friend walking by in a frog costume? Something humorous and unexpected will happen one way or another. No, I'm sorry. I just don't believe it. That violates my much abused suspension of disbelief on so many levels I don't even have the language to describe it. There is... there is just no way a bloody drink can manipulate reality to produce comedy setups. How much? Five knuts the can. Five knuts? You can sell reality manipulating soft drinks for five knuts the can? Two dozen cans, please.